the IC 7610, um, well, that was always going to be my next radio upgrade. I had the IC 7300. I actually started off with the Icom IC 706 many years ago. I then upgraded to the IC 7000 and then I upgraded to the 7300. So it was logical that the next step was going to be the IC 7610. Um, I found that it was, there was a lot of features. It was just more than just two IC 7300s in the 7610. I'm still trying to learn them all. Um, really, I should look at the manual and read the manual to understand all of the functions. But I had heard that it was, a lot of people were just saying, oh, it's just two 7300s put together, but that's not really what I've found in my experience. It actually come with a lot more different features um, that I uh, wanted and that I was gonna try out. So I actually did a review on my YouTube channel recently, which was basically first impressions of the radio. And um, yeah, it's, it's very, very impressive. So I actually bought the 7610, as I mentioned, to upgrade the 7300. Um, it gave me a couple of extra features that I really wanted. One was video out. It has DVI video out, which I use for streaming. So I stream here on my YouTube channel uh, when I'm on the air. So basically that's an easy way to get the, the screen and the signal meter and the frequency and all that sort of stuff, exactly what I see on the screen streamed out to uh, my uh, streaming software, which is OBS. It has the dual watch receiver with the sub receiver. Uh, so I use that to listen to two things at once. Uh, if usually I have six meters maybe on the sub receiver and then HF or then I swap the two round. Uh, it's got the two antenna ports. So the two switchable antenna ports. It's got the extra receive port for the receive only antenna as well. Uh, that's handy for here. Uh, I'm starting to get slightly more noise where I'm located, so I want to put a dedicated receive antenna in there, like a mag loop or something, just as a no noise, no noise, low noise receive antenna. Uh, I haven't even explored the SDR tap out of the back yet, um, the USB on the back, so that'll be awesome to get that full sweep of the spectrum. So overall, um, the 7610, the, like they're just a couple of the extra features. Uh, that come with it. I, I mentioned these all in the video that I did, but yeah, it's. Uh, I found that this radio, I'm still learning new things about it. So uh, I do also like the old school um, analog waterfall, uh, analog waterfall, analog meters as well. So you could switch between a digital meter or an, a digital version of an analog meter, which is kind of cool. I, I do like that touch. Uh, you don't get that with the 7300 either. The IC905, uh, when that came out, I was really, really excited to see this, uh, to see ICOM actually doing stuff in the microwave space, which is really, you know, of interest to me. Um, the IC905, it's out of my price range at the moment, uh, but it is a great innovation from ICOM for those that want to get into the microwave bands. When I say it's out of my price range, the thing is, is that I already have a IC9700, so I've got the, the 9700 for two meters, 70 centimeters and 23 centimeters. Plus I've already got transverters for 2.4 gigahertz. So if I bought the 905, I'd only be gaining 5.8 gigs and 10 gigs. But I tell you what, I could really see uh, where it, uh, the, the other thing though is, is that it becomes a little bit unwieldy. So I, if I have the 9700, I have the transverters, I have all of these radios, multiple radios, lots of boxes, um, lots of transverters, you know, you got to power them all and all that sort of stuff. Coax is going everywhere. Uh, but the 905 though, that I see it is a great all-in-one solution for the microwave experimenter. So I know that there's some uh, hams here in Australia where what they've done is they have uh, set it up on like a tripod and they've had all of the dishes and all of the antennas going into the main unit which is you know up on the uh, up on the master on the tripod and then they just run the cat5 cable back to the uh, the head unit which is you know sitting inside their car or something like that so it's a really good portable solution there's a lot of people that are using it as they rove around um, doing like field day and also doing contests and things like that and microwave experimentation so I think that the the 905 really suits those kind of operators who want sort of to get on the band as, as quickly as possible looking at the face value of it the cost of a 905 looks quite high but by the time you add all of the components in that you need to get to get on all of those bands separately. It kind of adds up to around about what a 905 would cost anyway. So, I mean, 10 gigahertz, you have the option of buying maybe 
two or three, oh, two, three transverters that are well known out there in the market and they're quite expensive. Uh, you could probably build your own, but that's not for everybody. 5.8 gigs, it's a similar story on that band as well. Um, 2.4 gigahertz, that band, I built my own transverter and I had to get like parts from here, there and everywhere. I built the amplifier, it puts out 25 watts or 50, uh, yeah, 25 watts. Uh, the transverter I had to buy, and by the time you add all of these up, it probably ends up being what a 905 is anyway. So if you're starting out and you want to get on all of those bands and you want to experiment on all of those microwave bands, then definitely that's where a 905 comes in because you don't need to go and get all of those individual components and put them all together. Obviously, you could still do that with like antennas and stuff like that and experiment with different dishes and different antennas. Um, which is what a lot of people have been doing here too. But uh, yeah, that's kind of where the 905 IC comes in. Uh, the remote head idea is is fantastic as well. That's the other thing that you, that you get with a 905 too. Is just that it's you know you get the the radio with the you can do the t uh, the analog television as well. So you can hook up a camera and you can talk uh, via you know do a TV transmission between the two. So you can't do that unless you've got another radio that does that i suppose so you know there's all these other features that the 905 has um that make it a, a radio which um it's like like an all-in-one type of solution and i really like to dabble with microwaves uh and i've got some other contacts who also like to dabble in microwaves it's actually pretty popular in australia microwaving there's a lot of people who are active on those bands which is fantastic to see because it's good to make sure that they're utilized because they are, are underutilized bands, but they're cool for experimentation and stuff like that. I know a couple of 905 owners have reached out to me and they're like, hey, you know, check this out. I've been doing, you know, television across to um, my mate across, uh, you know, several, you know, miles or tens of miles or even hundreds of miles away. And uh, they've been doing that. And then they've been talking to one another on the on the screens of the 905 and doing all that sort of cool stuff. So yeah, uh, there's quite a few of them here in VK that have been kitted out doing them. And I think that for their uh, their roving stuff that they've been doing is, is really good. Now, yeah, I did do a couple of videos on when the 905 was released and I talked a little bit about the cost of it. Uh, when I did those videos, I'm pretty sure that the, I, I compared the cost of a 905 like completely kitted out uh, versus you know buying all of the different transverters and bits for the bands that you get because you get what two meters 70 centimeters 1.2 gig 2.4 gig 5.6 gig and 10 gig like how many bands is that I didn't even count but if you bought all of the separate transverter modules for all of those frequencies plus all of the other bits that you need you know the switching the coaxes the uh coax switches the power switching all that sort of stuff really you start to get up in price anyway so um for those that want to sort of get into those bands as soon as possible then i reckon that they should give the 905 a look um, definitely Yeah, so my history on HF sort of goes back to when I became a ham. I started building an antenna for 15 meters. Uh, that was like pretty much as soon as I got licensed, but I got a little bit frustrated that I didn't make many contacts on it. And to be honest, I, I didn't fully understand the band conditions and how the sun affects things and all that sort of thing. Like this was back in 2004 and we were on the slide down in cycle 23. So, Luckily though, a couple of other hams, they helped me out and I got an, an 80 meter dipole up and I was able to make um, contacts and it was good because they were like, you know, 80 meters after dark, you'll be able to hear someone. So that's when the 80 meter band opens up, which is which was really good. Uh, but as far as HF's concerned, 10 meters is probably my favorite HF band. Um, it's so big, it's got everything. It's got SSB, it's got digital uh, satellites, although I'm not sure if any of the satellites are actually active or not. Uh, but my favorite bit on 10 meters is FM, which is underutilized FM. Um, I like working the FM repeaters at the, the top, end of band, uh, top end of the band up at 29 megahertz. And we've had actually quite a few openings lately and we've heard a lot of FM activity out there, which is great. As for my other HF operating, it's usually during a contest. So I live stream um, on my channel uh, a lot of contests that we do here in Australia, or I also do sort of uh, digital occasionally too. I do a lot of FT8. Um, stuff as well and 
Um, it's actually interesting here in Australia, it's a little bit different from what I've kind of seen um, around uh, the world, I guess also too in the US, especially from what I've seen like on YouTube and things. Um, HF here in Australia, it's a, it's popular, especially on 40 meters. Um, it's actually interesting, 40 meters probably has the highest level of activity, especially for poda. Poda on 40 meters is, is really popular here. And during the day, the distances, I think they, they lend themselves well to making consistent VK to VK contacts. Um, and also ZL, New Zealand's not that far away from here. Um, 20 meters to most of VK is is a bit close during the day. 20 meters actually works okay to from here to ZL. I usually hear a lot of VK4, which is around a thousand miles or so, but that's just my experience for, with with 20 meters. 40 meters seems to be the the band of of choice here. Um, when I was in the United States last year, I didn't get the chance to operate on HF, but it seems to me that 20 meters looks like the band of choice over in the US. I might be wrong there. It's just you know, it might be because of all of the hams that you have, and they're all spaced in the right in the right uh, locations. But especially inland there. But uh, but here, most of our population's on the coast, and you know, and most of the hams are on the coast. So it just seems that uh, 40 meters is the is the band to go to here. So my current shack consists of the Icom IC. 7300 i've still got that radio i haven't gotten rid of it and i don't think i'll ever sell it i've already said that on my channel a lot of uh, to a lot of people i've said i can't get rid of the 7300 the radio is just too good um and i'm sort of going to use that now for poda operation um and portable operation when i want 100 watts in that radio so i've got the 7300 now set aside for that the main radio in the shack here is the ic 7610 so that radio is the, the one that I purchased recently. So that's sitting here now as the, the flagship radio. And then I've also got the IC9700 as well because I do the work on the higher band. So I've got the 270, 23 centimeters in that. And then I've also got the IC705 and the 705 is just so versatile. I use it for all sorts of things. I mean, just today I actually went to a repeater site. So I look after a lot of amateur radio repeaters here and I took the 705 with me to test the antennas SWR because it was just easier to do that than bring in an antenna analyzer or something like that. So I brought the 705, plugged it in, tested the SWR on the antenna. The antenna was bad. And then I had a good antenna that I knew that I had. I plugged that in, 705, good. Made it actually made a couple of contacts on the 705, just holding it in the hand with the five watts. And uh, that worked really well. And I, t I do that all the time. I take the 705 everywhere, um, use it for portable stuff because it's got the HF all the way through to 70 centimeters so a great little radio so yeah i've i've got icom everywhere basically in the shack yeah so my channel ham radio dx it's around about five years old uh its goal has always been to inspire educate and promote amateur radio um just basically telling people to try something different or to learn something new uh, I usually stream here most Sunday evenings on my channel US time. I, I try to release about one or two videos per week on different subjects and it depends on if I get to them or not, but yeah, about one or two videos uh, per week. Yeah, so I do ham radio because really it's been a, a, a big part of my life for so long. And for me, I want to see it grow here, especially in Australia. And YouTube really is a, is a great platform for that. Plus, uh, I get to learn new things as I make videos and I tinker with all sorts of different things. Um, I guess for me, there's still magic in radio and amateur radio. And if, if I get bored, I'll just try something new. So my future in amateur radio, okay, uh, well, I wear a few different hats. I'm the president of my radio club here in Hobart in, in Tasmania where I am. So we're working hard to try new things there and, and invite new members along. And we try to impart some of the success that we have achieved there at our radio club to other clubs around Australia and around the world. So I, I would like to 
continue to try and do that, especially with other other clubs and other amateurs around the world, inspire them. Um, continue to, to help others learn and try something new. Um, the videos in my channel, uh, through those, hopefully I hit, I suppose personally, hopefully I hit 100,000 subscribers. That's, that's a goal. I'm just over halfway there now. Uh, another thing radio, specifically radio wise, I want to get into is the 10 gigahertz band. We have about four or five club members here who are on that band. So I want to play around with those. Um, I want to try and break a, a few more national Australian distance records. I currently hold two records. One is on 1.2 gigahertz and the other's on 2.4 gigahertz. So they're both over uh, 1,470 miles or so from Australia here to New Zealand or Tasmania here to New Zealand. So I guess that'd be a great goal to, to, walk, uh, to work towards and try and beat those. So uh, yeah, that's, that's probably the immediate future, I guess. So um, I'm Hayden, VK7HH is my call sign here in Australia. I also hold the call sign KD9SSB in the US. So that's my US, uh, I'm a general um, licensee over there too. And uh, yeah, my channel is Ham Radio DX. I have around about 55,000 subscribers, I think at the moment, uh, which is slowly growing, which is good. The, the good thing that I, I love to hear is people say, you know, when they say your, your channel's so helpful to me and it's helped me in this way or that way. That's really why I do it. If someone says that it's helped them in some way, then I'll continue to put out videos and, and educational content and try to inspire them to try something you know, new or maybe something that's a little bit out of the box that they haven't tried before. So uh, I think that whilst people keep saying that, um, I'll continue to, to you know, do my videos and, and try and help people to, to learn about amateur radio.